So we will pray and then we'll invite Reverend Dr. Gadairo to take over. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you this morning. We exalt you and praise your name. We give you glory that you are great God, your almighty, everlasting Father. Lord, this morning we surrender ourselves unto you, that God, you are going to speak to us the message that you have given your servant this day. We want to understand you, Lord. We want to know you better. We want to know your ways so that we can follow them. And so, Lord, as we sit down, we call upon the Holy Spirit of God to use your servant this morning to speak to us. We also surrender ourselves, dear Father, that God, our ears will be inclined to hear you. Our thoughts and all our being will be inclined to listen to your voice as you speak to us. We surrender to the Holy Spirit now to speak to us. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, we want to thank you that you have invited us to hear you through the means of the printed media that we have in the Bible. We want to thank you for the writing and how this message has been restored from the time it was written to this time when we are still alive. We want to pray that you may speak to our lives as you spoke to those people who heard this message for the first time. They may be able, Father, to apply it in our own situations, in our own lives, in our own needs. Because we have called us today as we remember that today, as we remember Easter, you laid in the grave. Today, this holy Saturday, when all the whole of Jerusalem was mourning, in a state of confusion of what is going to happen, I want to pray that, Lord, your word may speak to us even now, as you spoke even that time, with the message in the grave of the empty tomb. Speak to us now and reveal us who you are and who you can be. We pray this breathing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. You can take your seats. <clears throat> um, I was invited to do an exposition of your, your theme. And I was given about one hour to do that. But uh, I came quite early, around 9 o'clock, was around here. We have waited in the first three for about one hour. My session, it is already now finished. Because I was supposed to finish at 10.30. And see, <laughs> what do you normally do? I'm not starting with, with, with a complaint. And somebody else is coming to preach after me. Um, so may I ask the, the media if you you'll be able because they have the whole sermon, the whole sermon. They may not be able to complete it. I may go over it, but I may not be able to have time to go into details. You may read what is already there. Please make sure that you have a copy because it took me time to read and to, to write. I woke up at 4 a.m. to do the typing. I don't have a, a secretary this time. I typed this for me, these four pages. So I don't want that energy to go. I left my wife in the bed and, and I went to my study to, to, to type this. So make sure you read. You to get a copy. Yeah, it is, it is not a secretary, it's the one who did it. And because I, I did, I did my, my dissertation many years ago. So I still have those skills of typing. Um, there are two verses, but I decided to take only the verse that is very, that is very close to the, the, the topic. So I'm going to dwell so much on verse 19, which reads this. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you perceive it? I am making a way 
in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Um, I have constructed two, four points that will help us to understand this chapter. Um, this chapter. I'm going to do the introduction and I'll speak point number one because of his grace. And the point, the point number two, despite of their sins. Then I'll speak. He ushers them into the newness or, or in the spirit. And finally, I will talk about the, the new birth and the new creation as, as a conclusion. Um, I'll speak very little about um, the, the prophet who was called at this particular time by God for and giving the message that the people required at that time so let me uh, we ask ourselves who was Isaiah? The name Isaiah means the salvation of Jehovah. The salvation of Jehovah. His name means that. And the Jewish culture, like many other culture of the world, many, not all, names, they have a bearing, they have a meaning. How you name your child, how you, you name yourself, it has a meaning and a bearing. So, the word salvation, it is repeated many times in, mes in many messages of this prophet. The message of salvation and Messiah. In our Nekana, Eketika, Likwani Mesahau, uh the name Messiah and salvation. It is repeated. We don't have time to go into that. But he is one of the prophets who also interacted with the very many Jewish kings. Remember the issue of the Uzziah when he was crowned? What he said about Uzziah? Is somebody he was also from a leading, uh, was a reading uh, from the family. And today he's talking about uh, the dynasties, the roots of where people are coming from in politics and other things. But he's somebody who was aware of, who is interacted with a family where readers we are coming. He was from a reading. And uh, he, he was married. Married is a, it's a status very important in the Bible, or whatever somebody is. And he had two sons, as it is recorded in uh, chapter 7 and verse 3, and his, his marriage about, uh, Jerem, uh, 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 about uh, chapter 8, verse 13. And he had two sons. Alikuwa na vijana wawili. Na yare majina aliwapea, ilikuwa ni kulingana na kazi yake, na kulingana na maono yake katika ministry yake. Katika kazi ambayo alikuwa ameitiwa na akafanya. Hiyo jina kubwa imeandikwa pale utaona ah uh, Sheba Shebud. Jesha Jebud means the remnant shall return from Babylon. Alipopewa mtoto alifanya vile vile alisema ya kwamba huyu mtoto nimepewa nitampea hili jina ra Kiburania even in Odisha, at what wa mungu, what a rudi kwao. The remnant, that's what it means. 
yale ma, wale ambao watabaki baada ya kuwa katika inchi ya uhamisho watarudi kwao akampea hiyo jina kijana wa pili akamwita mahama sharar shabash speed to the spire mwambia kwamba uh, you, you quicken jaribu haraka ibezeka navyo to bring the victory of our people ili watu tukishindana tuchukue the roots vile vitu ambavyo vinachukuliwa mkiwa katika vita people go for rooting that's what it means the prayer ufanye kwa haraka in speed up speed up na he began his ministry close to the lane of Uzia with the year 750 78 BC and to surprise you as it is recorded in Hebrew chapter 11 verse 37 yeye mwenyewe alikatwa vivili na msumeno na this evil king called Manasse alikatwa vivili he was beheaded na so so msumeno this great man of god he preached until the end of that century and the book is divided into three verse chapter 1 to 39 he wants the jews about the impending invasion of judah in 586 and chapter 45 40 to 55 is the messages the experiences and the activities in exile in chapter 56 to 66 he encourages the jews captives to return from babylon captivity to their motherland and he also gives the, his people God's consolation after suffering ari waendea na kuambia kwamba pole pole wakati unapoandia kutoka katika hiyo inchi ya uhamisho those are very good messages even about messiah about the coming of christ if you read those chapters now because of this grace because of the grace of god isaiah proclaimed the love of hata ingawa vile walivyokuwa wamemtendea Mungu hata baada ya kupeleka katika uhamisho by the grace and the love of God That's why I say by the grace and because of the grace of God He proclaims Isaiah proclaimed awakahubiria juu ya upendo wa Mungu na ya kwamba Mungu ndiye mkubwa zaidi ya miungu yote and when the bible speaks about there is no any other god does not actually recognize another god be careful you don't compare god with another god because the bible does not recognize any other god kwa sababu hizo zingine they are creation tumetumia vitu vile ambavyo wewe mwenyewe ameuda si ndio So they are creatures they are crea- they are creation they cannot they cannot be equal they cannot be equal to god and this is what he speaks about here about the absolute sovereignty of god god being above all things because he created tunapofanya theologia tunaambia ya kwamba he he existed before and when he created there was no any other material that was there before he is the original of what he created he, there was no any pattern he copied there is no any design that was there he never copied he is uh, the original of all that is in the world he originated from him and him alone so this is what he talks about about uh, god superiority over over um 
or over or those other things. So Isaiah reveals the one true God. And that is the, the main theme of this chapter. And there's a main theme. One true God above all. You read from, from verse 1 up to 28. That's what it's all talking about. By, by God's grace, God has done many things. You can make a correction there. Done. It's omitted. And he had protected them from many things. He had protected them from fires, from waters, and all the enemies. Mungu, yeye yiku nchu ya mambo yote. Na katika kutadakazi kwake, alikuwa we mwenyewe, amewakinga na hatari zote za maji na mioto na hata adui zao and he had shown them by the uh, that nalikuwa uh, ameonyesha kwamba they were the preferred and the chosen people of all nations alikuwa ameonyesha kama vile alikuwa amewahidia baba zao the patriot alikuwa amewachagua Na hakuna wengine he preferred them ni lazima atawatumia kuteda kazi kuleta wakofu utakuwa uh, kama mfano they have been raised above and chosen by God himself and he showed them at this time in even this chapter he had protected them from many things I just talked about, about that and he told them I will gather you ni tawaleta pamoja wote Kote uri mwenguni, ni tawareta, I will bring all of you, all scattered in the Babylon, and I will take you back home, the land of your ancestors. And I have appointed you, I had appointed you to be a special witness. Mutakuwa wa shuhunda wangu, wa jambu, kote uri mwenguni. God had around the Jews to be captured, Despite all that, he had around to be them to be captured, to be exiled, to be punished of their sins. Chapter, 2, chapter 18 up to 25. Wakati babu walikuwa na shinda, nyingi. If you read those chapters, he around, God arounds. If things to come to us, but he does not leave us. He arouses, but he does not depart from us. No, it is not in a time because he will not be God. He will not be God if it is time he will leave us and not with us because he is everywhere according to his, to his attributes. It would be wrong to say that. His presence, but he arouses them to be captured, to be exiled, to be punished and to suffer for 70 years and he comes back to them. Captivity will not, will not be forever and uh, if you go back to 42 Isaiah 42 verse 10 and 17 God destroyed God, God destroyed you know, Babylon, he was to destroy Babylon and you seeing uh, he, he uh, you see, and, and you see King Silas is, is his own tool. In chapter 43, God assures Israelites, fear not. Hata ingawa munashida zira mbazo, munapitia na muka katika hali hiyo, I am with you. It's an assurance. I am with you. I have not gone anywhere. Do not fear. I am with you. Isaiah condemns or condemns or rebukes the nation of Israel for having forgotten. You can correct that media. It's not uh, forgiven but forsaken. Number two. Despite all, of all their sins, the nation had forgotten God. Yet his grace 
And his love was still available for them. God would forgive them of their sins. 45, 25, the same chapter. And the promise of grace would be applied to the future of the Jews' life. How God gives and pardons them. And the remnant would be reminded during their period of tribulations. And when he had done that, he speaks about the, the new Exodus. He tells them, I am going to take you to another Exodus. Not the one of your forefathers that you went through the wilderness. But the provisions that I give during that time will go with you even in this new, even in this new exodus that is coming. The guidance, I'll give you the guidance. Remember the 12, remember the 12 minor prophets that we have. How, how they guided them, the 12 minor prophets. They speak about how they will go and how they go. They talk about the exile, the post exile period. How they will go. He will go give you the guidance. I will give you the presence. The provisions and the providence. And all the protection that you need. There's going to be. They are going to appear in this. As it, it happened even. The other exodus of your forefathers. It is going to appear. Rivers. And I will give you water. In the wilderness. The exodus from Babylon took up. The exodus from this not exodus not from Egypt, but from the Bronian captivity. It is going to be as it is this one, it is not going to be the slavery from Pharaoh, but it is going um, a slavery of sin and punishment. Now he jumbo, he pays some attention. And he tells them, Behold, behold, by the word behold. It is calling attention. I will do a new thing. This is now your theme. I will do a new thing. There is going to be a new beginning. There is going to be a new era. There is going to be restoration of Israel to Palestine. I will make a way in the wilderness. I will make rivers in the desert and go refers to the converted and restored nation. In verse 43, Kuna Jambo Anasema Aboni Ramana, I formed you for myself. Nili waumba kwa njiri yangu, no si kwa nyinyi wenyewe. I formed you for my own self. I created you for my own self. That you may glorify me. You may praise me. I may use you in the world that I created. So you are not here by mistake. You are not here that you do what you do. I formed you. And I created you. For myself. Mungu ati nie ni dako mbire ni tondo wako wa nie mwene. Ni tondo wako we mwene. Ni dako mbire nie mwene. Ni tondo wako wa nie mwene. It's very strong that one. I formed you. Myself. So you're not there. Just for the sake of being there. He has a purpose. To take care of. But because nothing na mkubuki ya kwamba si thabihu ambazo mwenye nitolea mimi ili ni wakoe you have not offered me any sacrifice it's because I loved you not even because you have repented of your sins not even because that we have seen that you have Repented of your sins. 
Kwa sababu kulingana na dhabi zetu zile ambazo tulikuwa tumetenda kulihitaji mtu mwingine kama vile ilivyo wakati huu wa Easter atoe dhabi yetu kwa ajili yetu that we may be able to meet the requirement the righteousness that God wanted to save the mankind we do not we do not qualify in any way i am i am saving you from where you are not because of anything that you have done for me not because of any sacrifice not even because that you have repented of your sins which i have given you 70 years to be in babylon i have only mercy and kindness because you get finished completely i no longer remember your sins anymore enough is enough even i want to make a new uh, read from 38 of isaiah 17 jeremiah chapter 31 verse 34 i'm um, even going to make a new covenant isn't it which is jesus christ now he comes and says he sympathizes with us by his mercies it is embraces the outpouring of the holy spirit to come according to joel joel chapter 2 verse 28 rivers of the living waters will flow from you john chapter 7 verse 38 he talks about about this water of the believers the flow of the, of the pouring of the holy spirit on the day of the pentecostal he ushers them point number three he ushers them into the new into the newness or into the spirit the new things he would do is that uh, there's going to be a new beginning there's going to be a new beginning and in the new beginning i am going to forget all the past sins and all your disobedience in this new beginning because i put you in captivity for 70 years you have suffered enough all oh, what i have done after i have done prophets prophet have been killed ezekiel and those others jeremiah have been killed now i have come in this now chapter because you have refused to repent because of my mercy of who i am and my kindness because of my loving kindness i want to take you back because of the because of the promise i made with my forefathers with the, by your forefathers he will forgive them. He, uh, he, what he, he, will, uh, he will forgive them their sins and all their disobedience. And the other thing is that he will return them to their motherland of their ancestors. And I'll be the, my, I'll be the final judgment. The judgment itakuwa kwangu. And uh, he will forget the former things you no longer dwell on the past. And he says, I am making new things. I'm making all things new. Making new things the theme. This theme is also repeated in the New Testament. It is repeated by John the apostle of the evangelist. Jeremiah, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 21, 5. These words are true and faithful. I'm making all things new. John the baptizer or the Baptist, the great evangelist who comes to the world before to prepare the coming of Christ, he talks about that also in another way. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. He cautions them just before the coming of Christ. Matthew 3, 6 talks about Jesus himself 
he comes with the same message. Hao watu hawakuwa na mahubiri makubwa kama yale ambayo tunahumbili almost the whole bible when i'm given an opportunity. Ni ni kama hakuna wakati mwingine wa kuhubiri. It's a very simple message. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. Confess. Then Jesus in John chapter 3 in Matthew chapter 3 verse 5 verse 3 he tells them confess your sins Jesus comes with a message confess your sins and be baptized the sign of the new life and the new beginning confess your sins and be baptized as a sign of a new beginning in your life but Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 he says repent for the kingdom of God is near. John speaks about the kingdom of heaven and Jesus talks about the kingdom of God. What about John chapter 3 verse 3? The experience of Jesus and the Nicodemus. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. In verse 7 must be born again. And no one can enter the kingdom of God unless born of water and the Spirit. What about Paul? Chapter 5, verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. God has reconciled us, the people, to himself. Through Christ. The old self of the whole Christian died in the death of Christ. We are talking today about uh, Jesus being in a grave. And here Paul, we hear Paul when he talks about this. He says this that the old self, the whole of you died in, in his death and a person from the death rose again a new freshly created human being by his own hands a new refreshed created human being came into being in this newness of life there is a new standard that is already established katika jabu hili ni kataka tuelewe Katika ubatizo, tunambia kwamba tunakufa pamoja na kristu. We die with Christ. And in that, in that, in that day that we die, that we are remembering that Jesus Christ today, he is in the grave. And he will select tomorrow. We, we reselect even that, that act of baptism. That is why we are challenged by the you know, Pentecostals about not, not just going into the water and raising again. That act, unakufa Na katika hii hicho kifo we mwane, unakufa. Na kutoka hicho kifo we una, from that kifo, that person, the whole of yourself, a new, a new person, freshly. Mutu ambaye, kwa sababu, mungu anapo, anapo eh, kusamehe dhambi, hakuoni tena kama ulikuwa mwenye dhambi. God does not see you, uh, does, does not see you as somebody who have ever seen. It is what he is talking about. But there is a new set of standards. Lakini kuna chia hili ambao utaishi badai. But they are here. There is already, the standard is already set. Which we don't have time to talk about that. And this is where, when you talk about this newness. Kwa hiko, unapo batizo, unapo koka, unakufa katika kristo, na katika hicho kifo, ambacho we mwenyewe unakufa, mungu ana, anafufua, he recreates a freshly, fresh, another human being who has never seen, who has already been forgiven your sins, and God has not seen you again as a sinner. So that's why Paul says, you are a new creation. You have been you have been uh, recreated. You have been taken to the original person who was created where there's no sin. 
we go back to originality by third conversion of faith it is we go back to that originality we go back to that person that was created and he says I have forgotten what was there and you know wrong you are no longer saying but I have set new standard for you there is the way in which you are going to live and you are going to demonstrate that by your changed behavior, your character, the way you do things. Christ, Paul talk about it. God being imprinted, Christ being imprinted on your face. Christ being, you know, printed on your face, on your character, when you see the character, when you see the behavior, the way you live, you reflect God himself. You reflect Christ himself. Christ is seen in what you do, in what you live, and what you do. Those are the new standards that I established. To conclude because of time, your time now, I don't know, I, I want to be obedient. Acts chapter 4, verse 2, salvation is not in no one else. Not only in one else, not in any, anything else. Hakuna wakofu katika dini ingine. We have done, we have done, we have done the, all the regions of the world. And when they talk about salvation, it is totally different from what you talk about ourselves. Because ours, it is only not in anyone else. Not in anything else. Not anything else that man can do today or tomorrow. But it's the only in the name of Jesus that we have salvation. He is the only Savior. Isaiah chapter 4, chapter 43, verse 13 and 11. When he says no, Oh yes, no one can reverse it. To conclude, the four points when we become new, the new things happen in our lives. We have a new purpose of our lives. We have a new purpose. We have a new power, not power of our own, of our sin. We have a new destination. <laughs> we have a new destination of where to go. We have a new relationship. Because we have been reconciled to God. Not only that we have been reconciled to God, we have been reconciled to my sister and to my brother. Reconciliation, I have been reconciled to God by what he did in that newness and I have also been reconciled to my brother and to my sister. And we have a new relationship. And we have the fellowship in which we have. And we become the body of Christ, the church. May Almighty God, through the preaching of the word, and by the enablement of the Holy Spirit, as those others have spoken, and those who speak even after, may He continue to speak to us. And to bring this newness, this new life in us, this new beginning in our eyes. That's to be imprinted in our eyes, in our character. It is seen because new students have already been established. When it's time we pray. <clears throat> Father, we want to thank you for the preaching of your word about new beginning, new era. I want to thank you that how you visited your people in captivity. And Father, not because they had sacrificed, not because that they had repented, but by your mercy and by your grace and by your love, you are able to drive them from captivity. We want to thank you for taking them back to the land of Canaan, 
the Paris time. And I want to thank you, Lord, for bringing Jesus into our lives and for all this week that we have observed the Holy Week, the Passion Week. And as we remember today, when he went to preach those souls in prison, in the grave, and how round he will select tomorrow. He have told us about the death, how we die, and in the death, you are able to raise a new person. Lord, we pray that you may be able to raise us as new beings, the new beginning, in the new resurrection, as we experience that power of newness, power of resurrection. And may go with us. Dear Lord, let us, Lord, live as freshly created people. The new beginning, the new era, the new life. Speak to us through your word, strengthen us, and in particular the four purposes. Give us a new purpose now. Give us a new power and give us a new destination and give us a new relationship with you because we have been reconciled. We pray this breathing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.